evening. This is Cindeville, and tonight I want to talk about a serious subject. Uh, my friend Midnight Owl is in a project that needs some funding, so I'm going to link her channel or the video that she talks about it underneath this, but it's about anxiety, and I want to tell you my personal story about how long I've been dealing with anxiety, what I do to cope, uh, the things that help me, the things that don't. Um, I started suffering from anxiety probably as a teenager. From being in a one-parent household and really a semi-absentee parent at best. So, I mean, that kind of puts extra duties on you as a child. And uh, many of the times that I'm talking about, we, we lived out in Nowheresville. So, I mean, there wasn't really a whole lot of kids for me to make friends with, maybe like, one or two neighbors, but that was about it. And then going into my teenage years is when I really started dealing with being bullied a lot and being made fun of because I was different. I mean, I was different in a way because I had to be, and I was different in a way that I wanted to be. I was different because I was poorer than most of the kids at that time. And I just, I, I don't believe in just being like lemmings or what's that old game where just one jumps off the cliff, everybody jumps off the cliff. I believe in finding my own path. So. Just because I don't want to wear the same shirt that you're, you do or buy every single piece of my clothes from the store that you do or because your mom can go and spend 50 bucks on a sweater for you and I have to get mine from 10, for $10 from the discount store, you know, Kids are idiots, and bullying just really needs to be addressed at, at a bigger level. And maybe I'm going to do one about that in the future, too. But, okay, let's take it... Let's take it up into my 20s. When I was on my own, my mom my real mom passed away and I had to worry about finding my own apartment and everything and this was pretty much when I was still making decent money but I was going through rocky roads with relationships and just some of the people around me just being backstabbers and you know, I was telling this to one of my friends one night when we were at the diner and she gave me a, a piece of one of her meds, which I do not suggest taking anybody else's medication under any circumstances. I'm just telling you what happened to me. And it turns out that she was suffering from anxiety too. So I tried this little crumb of medication and it just, it helps so much. And I mean, that's basically now how I deal with my anxiety is through medication. Like talking conventional therapy, I mean, they just try to bring the worst parts up to the surface and 
you know, I've gone to those things that leave there crying, and you know what? I feel worse for the next couple of days. It's like, you know, I wasn't feeling that bad before I came here. What am I going to put myself through this again? So, yeah, no, I mean, if therapy works for you, please go, go to it. You know, I've heard that there's different kinds of therapy, just the regular talking ones, the group sessions, the hypnotic, I mean, whatever kind that you can find that works. And if you don't have to resort to medication, A plus for you. But, I mean, there are many different medications out there. I mean, uh, I'm not really going to say the one that I'm on because I don't want you to necessarily think that that's exactly what you need, but there are a certain class of medications that really instantly calm you down and if you've done any research into anxiety medications, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, and this is an, another good thing that we can do is just be there for each other. If somebody needs some help or if they're having a bad day, just be there to talk to them. Give, give somebody your number, your email address and say, I'm here for you if they need to talk it out. And you know what, if your doctor doesn't want to treat you or thinks that you're faking something and you know you have a real problem, you're not with the right doctor. These doctors will try to convince you that they're the only ones, they're God. No, they're not. They're just one out of a million. So if you have to go to the next town over, if you have to go to the next state over, it's worth it. Because you don't want to put your care in somebody's hands that doesn't care about you. I mean, you know, up until a certain point, we could order things into the U.S. And I, I'm a strong believer that we should, as long as we've had a prior prescription, and that we're only uh, acquiring enough to meet the demands of our prior prescription and we haven't been caught dealing anything to anybody else, that, that should still be an option, uh, you know, as somewhat to self-medicate because to self-medicate on other substances is even more extreme. So, I mean, that's just my thoughts. But, uh, please talk to somebody, if it's a hotline, if it's your doctor, if it's a friend, um, talk to someone and see what they think they can do for you. If you're not getting the help that you think you deserve, then go to somebody else. There's a million and one people out there and you know what, uh, you're quality, not just quantity. So you go and find the doctor or practitioner that's going to help you. And this is Cindaville signing off and I wish you all 